Ukrainian troops are trying to hold off Russian attacks in much of Ukraine's east. The Kremlin wants to capture the whole of the industrial Donbass region, but gains are smaller and coming slower than expected. Further south on the Sea of Azov, a handful of civilians has been allowed to leave a steelworks in the besieged city of Mariupol. Families of those still trapped in the port town gathered in the capital, Kyiv, so they would not be forgotten. The anguish is etched on their faces. These women fled Mariupol, but their loved ones did not. Now in Ukraine's capital, Kyiv, they are pleading for the lives of their besieged family members. One woman says she can't eat, knowing that her husband is starving. Another issued this call to action. We, as wives of the defenders, express our willingness to become human shields, to make a corridor to Mariupol to protect an international delegation. We ask the UN, we ask believers of all faiths, we ask the Red Cross and all of them to join our march to Mariupol. We will become a human shield for the delegation to help evacuate our husbands. They are here in the Azovstal steel plant, the final holdout in Ukraine's port city of Mariupol. Conditions are thought to be dire. The deputy commander of the Azov Regiment, Ukraine's far-right nationalist unit, reported that 20 civilians were safely evacuated. Russia says 25 people were freed from the steel plant. Ukraine's president has vowed to fight for those still trapped inside. All the leaders of the free world know what Russia has done to Mariupol. Russia will be held to account for this. Many world leaders are trying to help save our heroic defenders of the city. This was discussed in great detail with the UN Secretary General during his visit to Kyiv. We're doing everything, everything to ensure that the evacuation mission from Mariupol is carried out. Far from Mariupol in Ukraine's north, authorities say they've uncovered more evidence of alleged Russian atrocities. In Bucha, a town now synonymous with claims of war crimes, the bodies of three more civilians were found. Police say the men had been tortured and bound, then shot in the head. With many residents in Bucha still unaccounted for, survivors in the scarred town know that more grim discoveries could still be unearthed. And for more, let's bring in DW correspondent Matthias Bullinger, who is now in Ukraine's main port city of Odessa in the southeast. Matthias, Ukraine's military says a Russian missile hit the runway in the airport of Odessa, where you're at. Uh, what else do you know? Yeah, yesterday, well, shortly after we arrived, we heard three loud explosions and uh, the runway has been hit by missiles. It's destroyed. It cannot be used anymore. No people have suffered uh, in these attacks uh, uh, and uh, the missiles that hit this runway were fired from Crimea, um, which is the, uh, the territory that Russia has annexed in 2014. And you were just in the capital, Kyiv, before coming to Odessa. What's the situation like there? Uh, Kiev is, is now for, for more than a month or for about one month, it, uh, no Russian troops are near Kiev anymore. So life uh, is a little bit, is returning to the city. The city is a little bit more uh, relaxed than it had been, of course, when it was, it was never besieged. But the troops were in some parts, uh, they were very close to the, to the city borders. Uh, and um, uh, now this has changed. So the situation is, 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 is uh, it's not normal, of course. Many people have left the city. It's pretty empty. A lot of shops are closed and a, a lot, there's a curfew and so on and so on. But it doesn't feel as uh, critical as before. Having said that, Kiev, like any other city in Ukraine, is still a target for missile attacks. And just a few days ago, there was a missile attack while the UN said Secretary General was there. So there is, of course, uh, it is, of course, a wartime capital. And just to, to move on to Mariupol, uh, where, of course, those holdout fighters are being besieged in the steelworks. Uh, what else can you tell us about the situation there? 
So uh, the good news that we heard yesterday is that about 20 people have left. We've just heard that. Uh, the steelworks and uh, that's uh, 20 people out of an estimated 1,000 civilians. It's very difficult to leave that place. There has been heavy fighting. The site has been heavily bombarded and you would need some kind of a ceasefire to be able to leave. And uh, these ceasefires are being negotiated with the help of the UN. but. Often they do not uh, uh, they do not happen even if they have been agreed to. What we heard yesterday from that commander of the Azov battalion is that it had been agreed to have a ceasefire from the morning, and these civilians, these 20 civilians, could leave in the evening. So how it will go for the other uh, several hundred civilians who are in there, we have no idea. Okay, DW's Matthias Billinger in Odessa. Thanks for that. Russia's intensifying offensive in Ukraine's east and south has left the country in need of weapons and fighters. Across the country, ordinary citizens have joined the Territorial Defense Units, a volunteer force. Our correspondent, Jan Philip Schultz, met a mother and daughter who have taken up arms together. For Natalia and her daughter, Veronika, the last weeks have been a crash course in weaponry. On the second day of the war, Natalia enlisted in Ukraine's territorial defense forces. Veronika soon followed. A few days later, they were deployed as volunteer fighters. Like any mother, I worry about my child. But she made her own decision, and I tried not to influence her. And of course, it also makes me a little proud that my daughter is accompanying me. Pictures of their everyday lives from just three months ago show another world. Natalia was a fashion designer. Her daughter studied medicine. When the war began, many of their family and friends fled abroad. It's a decision both women can understand. But for them, it wasn't an option. All my siblings are now abroad, in Italy, Greece, Canada. No one ever thought I'd be the one staying in the country. I've always been a little bit of the posh girl. But I just told them, we'll see each other after we win. It's estimated that women make up around 10% of the Ukrainian armed forces. Men have physical advantages, but women are often mentally stronger, says Natalia. And both sexes are prepared to put their lives on the line for their country. The comrades fighting in the East say, killing someone for the first time is always hard. Now I think maybe I can do it. You never know until you're actually in that situation. Despite their fears of what they might face on the front line, both are certain that Ukraine will win the war. Let's have a look now at some of the other stories related to the war in Ukraine. The U.S. Speaker of the House of Representatives, Nancy Pelosi, has met with Ukraine's President Volodymyr Zelensky in the capital, Kyiv. Pelosi is the highest-ranking American official to visit Ukraine. Video from Ukrainian officials shows talks with con the congressional delegation. Pelosi praised Ukraine's defense of freedom, and Zelensky thanked the visitors for America's support. Hollywood actor Angelina Jolie has also made a surprise visit to Ukraine. In the western city of Lviv, she spoke to people displaced by the war and children wounded by a Russian missile strike. Jolie is a special envoy for the United Nations Refugee Agency. Last month, she visited Yemen, where millions have also been displaced by the war. American President Joe Biden has praised journalists for their coverage of the war in Ukraine. Biden was speaking at the White House Correspondents' Dinner, an annual gala that in the past two years was canceled due to the pandemic. Biden said that a rise in disinformation has made press freedom more important than ever. New footage from the Ukrainian village of Demidiv has revealed the damage caused by a tactical flood. On day two of the war, the village was intentionally flooded to stop the advance of Russian soldiers. Ukraine's army has been strategically destroying infrastructure around the country to thwart their enemy.